So Apple has just updated Final Cut Pro to 10.6. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the new features and show you in brief how they work. So Apple has done some really good improvements here. And in this new version, we've got a brand new object tracker and the ability to edit cinematic mode footage coming from your iPhone 13. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into Final Cut Pro because we have a ton of tutorials that'll help you with your video editing right here on the channel. Now, anyway, Apple has updated to Final Cut Pro 10.6. And whilst there are some big speed improvements to the software, for example, if we check out Apple's website, they now say if you get one of the new MacBook Pros that were announced last night, and man, these look really exciting. The SD card reader is back at last. Uh, if you get one of these new MacBook Pros and Final Cut, it's up to seven streams of 8K ProRes in 422, the ability to run seven streams at the same time. You've got the ability to run up to 30 streams of 4K ProRes 422. Two. Apparently it's up to 5.5 times faster at ProRes encoding and it's also up to 2.9 times faster in 8K project rendering time. So really good speed improvements there if you're interested in Final Cut Pro and getting the new MacBook Pros as well. But of course, there's updates here that are available for everyone. So other than the speed increases, Apple has now added the ability to edit your cinematic footage coming from your iPhone 13 Pro. And if you check out our iPhone 13 Pro review up here, you can see how this new cinematic footage looks coming directly from the iPhone. But before today, you weren't able to actually edit this footage within Final Cut Pro. Of course, you could edit it like a normal video clip, but you had to make the f-stop and the, the, you know, the background blur adjustments on your iPhone. So now they've added the ability for you to edit this in Final Cut Pro. The only problem is at the moment, I can't show you this directly because um, we're gonna have to wait until the next release of Mac OS comes out in a couple of weeks time. Uh, when you try and edit that footage at the moment, it just says you're not able to do it. But essentially this update will allow you to click a new cinematic section within the inspector. And then from the inspector, you can change the f-stop like you can in a normal camera. And essentially, the lower the number, the more blurry the background will be, the higher the number, the more in focus everything will be. It will also allow you to change the focus points um, after you film the video. So as you can see in this example here, we've got two people in a car and you can change who you want to be in focus. So that's really great. But the next thing I can show you is the new object tracker. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you how that works. So the object tracker is very, very cool. And there's actually a ton of ways you can do this. So I've just pulled together a few clips just to run through really crudely how this works and how you might be able to use this in your workflow. So you can see in this shot here, I've got this sort of pretty shaky shot of the St. Andrew's brew house in Norwich. And what you could do, let's just say you had a building, a warehouse, maybe you're doing a video for a client and you wanna add their logo to the building. This is one way you could use the object tracker and this is how it works. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways of how you can get this to work. So the first way, I'm just gonna click on the clip and if we go over to the inspector on the right hand side, at the bottom here, you can see you've got trackers. Now I'm gonna click plus and you can see this is gonna add a new kind of tracking map to the screen. So what I'm gonna do here, just to quickly show you how this would work, is I'm gonna drag this down roughly to fill the space uh, of this sign. So let me just zoom in a little bit here so we can see this roughly here. And it only has to be very rough for this to actually work. So let me do that. So you can see there, I've, I've roughly mapped the sign there on the side of the pub. So all you need to do now is click the analyze button. And what this is gonna do, is this is gonna analyze each frame of the video forwards and then backwards to do the tracking for you. So you no longer have to kind of do something frame by frame and keyframe it yourself. Final Cut Pro is gonna do this for you. So you can see this is actually working pretty fast. And uh, now it's doing the backward motion. And it does the entire clip, by the way. It doesn't just do a small amount, it will do the entire clip. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to my clips here and I've got this kind of web banner from Editor's Keys and I'm gonna just chuck this onto, onto, on top of the clip like so. And as you can see, it's a little bit big. So 
I'm gonna go to transform first of all. I'm gonna shrink this down so it's kind of roughly the size of this sign. Let's do it about there. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's just get rid of this. What I'm gonna do is go to distort and then I'm gonna click the corners here and then I'm gonna match this up. And as I say, I'm only doing this very crudely just to show you how this works and how you could use it in your workflow. So that kind of looks okay. Now the problem is when you go to play this, it's not in place, right? It's not tracking anything. So all you need to do is just make sure you've got the transform enabled like so. And then we're gonna go down to tracker here and then we're gonna down, click the down arrow and then we're gonna select this first object track that we did earlier. And you can already see it selected that there. So I'm gonna pop over this back into place like so. And let's just drag this all the way across the image here. And then we should find, as we play the clip through, this is gonna stay in place. And look at that, how good does that look for a really, really fast job? I did that in like two seconds, right? So if you spent a bit of time on that, maybe changing the, the blending modes, you could get this looking really, really good. So again, let's just try this really quickly on this shop front here. And I'm gonna try and change this stranger sign with the Editor's Keys logo. So let's do that again. So uh, all we need to do is we are going to add a new tracker by clicking down here again. And I'm just gonna do this as fast as I can really, just to show you how powerful this is. So I'm gonna pull this in like so. I'm gonna drag this in and just get it to cover the text like so. And it looks like it's covering all the text there. And I'm just gonna hit Analyze. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna touch anything else. And we're gonna see how well this can track this sign. Now I can, I can see just at the front there, it did jump at the very start. So you may need to try this one or two times to get it perfectly right. Other than that, it's looking pretty good from the motion tracking at the moment. So we'll put the logo on in a second and see how it does. Okay, so next, all we need to do is we are gonna grab this Edits Keys logo. And again, it's too big, so I'm gonna quickly go to Transform. We're gonna, sh we're gonna shrink this logo down. I'm gonna put it a little bigger like so. And then I'm gonna go to the Distort again, and we're just gonna make it match the sign that's underneath. too bad. Again, this is very crude and if I was doing this professionally, I would spend a lot more time than I'm doing right now. Uh, let's go to transform and I'm just going to click this down arrow here and just select the object track, which is the first one that we did. So tell you what, let's just drag out the logo here and let's just play it from about here. Ooh, did a little jump there, but overall, I think that looks pretty good. And again, if you spend more time on it, remember this is a pretty shaky shot. I think you could use that for professional work. If you just play the middle bit, with a bit of fine tuning, that could be really, really good. So really handy if you've got some client work or maybe you wanna add a logo to something that's moving, you can do that. Now, other, other ways you can use this, and I think this one is really, really cool. All of the effects that you currently have within Final Cut now have this kind of AI, um, uh, sort of machine learning built into uh, Final Cut, which you can use to adjust the colors. So, I'm gonna drag this color wheels onto this clip. Now, instead of drawing the mask first, I'm gonna let Final Cut Pro do its magic. So, I'm gonna to go to color wheels, and I'm just gonna just drag it on top of this viewer here. Now, what you can see here is as you drag it around, you can see that Final Cut is detecting certain objects in the scene. Now, this one doesn't have um, a ton of objects. You can see the guy here on the right, and you've got the actress here. But you can see as I drag it over her face, it actually recognizes her face, and that's exactly what I wanna use it for in this scene. So I'm gonna let go, and you can change the, the shape as you would with any mask. And again, I'm just gonna show you this crudely, but uh, let's just drag this out so this covers her face. I'm gonna hit Analyze, 
And what I'm gonna do with this, as you can see, this is uh, an actress on stage and you can see her face is, isn't very well lit, it's quite dark. So I'm gonna use the color wheels after this is analyzed just to lighten her face a little bit. Now, of course, you may wanna adjust this mask to your liking, but I'm gonna show you quickly how this works. So let's get up these color wheels and I'm just gonna bring up the mid-tones here. Uh, just bring it up really bright. So let's just show this. Through. I'm going to bring up the highlights a lot here, so let's just play this through. So we'll take off, just look at that as we play through. You can see how much of an immediate impact that makes to the actress's face. Again, a very crude, quick example, but if you were to play around with this, I think you could get some really, really good results. So if your lighting wasn't right on a subject, you could use this automatic tracker to do this kind of thing. The next thing I wanna show you is uh, a quick way of tracking and adding text. So here's a shot, a little drone shot of me just driving my car. And what you can do is we're gonna get some text up here. And I'm just gonna use the, the basic text built into Final Cut to show you this. And I'm gonna get the basic title. And again, instead of dragging it on top of the timeline like you normally would, I'm just going to um, drag it just above the car. And as I do that, you should see that it detects the object here. And I'm gonna let go. Now, all you need to do is click Analyze once again, and this should scan the car, track the motion, and then the text will move with the car. So let's let Final Cut do its thing. Okay, so it's done its thing there. I'm gonna to go to Text, and let's just change that so it says Tesla. I'm gonna move this around so it's just on top. And let's just drag this title all the way across and hit play. And as you can see, the text, actually let's just change the color of that. So you can see it a bit clearer. Let's make it a blue color. And you can see the text follows the car. Now it does a little jump again there. So what you may, may wanna try is actually, rather than letting Final Cut do its thing sometimes, actually try drawing the mask yourself. But you can see there, apart from the little jump in the middle, it works pretty well. Again, here's a shot from an iPhone 13 review that we did a couple of weeks ago. And this would have been a nice feature to have. We could have just essentially dragged this on here and we could have you know, done a call out to the camera section. So you can see there it's detected the cameras. Let's move this across. Let's hit analyze. Let Final Cut do its thing. And you can see there it's tracking the cameras on the back of the iPhone. Even though the shot there is quite shaky and it just goes out of focus, you can see it's still doing a really, really good job. Okay, so now we've added that. Again, let's move this text over to the left maybe, and let's call this iPhone 13 Pro. Let's just drag this to the side, and then let's hit play, see what it looks like. There we go. And you can see the text is actually moving and rotating as we move the, uh, the, the phone about. So that's really good. It stays almost glued to the phone. Now, if you don't want the text to kind of rotate, you can actually change this. So what we're gonna do is let's go to our video settings here. And in Transform, you'll see you've got these new icons here on the right-hand side for position and rotation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the one at the top here. And you can see you can actually untick some of these. So you've got position, rotation, scale, or remove altogether. So if I untick rotation, what you'll see what happens now is that the text doesn't actually kind of rotate left and right. It should stay pretty flat and just move side to side. So depending on what you're trying to do, maybe if you've got someone moving their head round, you may want the text to rotate as they rotate. In this case, I kind of want the text to stay front on so the, the viewer would be able to read the text. And you can see there, it does a really, really good job. 
Now, of course, this will work with any text plugins that you may have. So we've got a ton from Motion VFX and Pixel Film Studios, and I can confirm that all of the ones that I've tested so far work really, really well. So if you've got maybe some call outs, some images, maybe you just want like a little YouTube icon to appear next to something and move about with it, this can be done in this version of Final Cut Pro. So there you go. That's just a really quick rush through of the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.6. Let me know what you think of those in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see a full in-depth tutorial where we spend a bit more time on this, getting it right, and showing you some of the extra things you could do with this, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see if we can make that video, make that video for you. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.